I don't think there's anything worse than burying your child. I don't think there's anything worse than that. I, I, I can't think of it. Jacob was uh, in the Illinois Air National Guard. His rank was Staff Sergeant. Uh, he joined the Illinois Air National Guard in 1998. My son is Sergeant Blake Evans, who was killed in Iraq on May 25th of 2008. Andrew was my only son, so, but as an American, I'm proud of him. All servicemen and women, actually. He was the leader of the pack, and he was the instigator, and he was a, he, he was, had a very creative mind. He and I uh, fished together uh, a lot. Uh, uh, when you got five kids, you can't do much except get a pop-up camper and go camping every weekend. And we did that, and uh, truly loved that. He was living on his own, and he said, I'll, I won't see you for six months. I'm taking off for basic training. And I said, what'd you do, join the military? And he said, yeah, I joined the Illinois Air National Guard. I said, how long ago? And he said, about three months ago, but I didn't want to tell you because I thought you'd be mad that I didn't join the Marine Corps. I'm an old Marine. I looked at him, I said, you gotta be kidding me. You know, I'm very happy you joined the Illinois Air National Guard. I like to reflect on Blake's life and growing up, he was a mischievous little guy, you know, um, full of life, full of energy, enjoyed sports. Blake expressed an interest in the military for a couple of different reasons. Um, my dad was a World War II vet and he was very close to him and wanted to follow in his footsteps. I had serious reservations about it, um, but yet I knew this is something that he needed to do and he wanted to do. Um, so I supported him and just held strong to my faith that he was gonna be okay. As a sophomore in Byron High School, it's an annual event that they take a trip to Arlington Cemetery. And upon returning home from that, um, there was a, a, a personality change in his demeanor. Um, he took things a lot more serious, and he took a lot of his you know, boyish kind of things that he had in his room, and, and, and he put them in a box and, and put them in a basement. And without saying any, anything, I feel that his way to communicate with other men and, and, and his, his faith was his refuge while he was in the military because you go through so many things and, and people don't know how to or where to turn in the, in, the, in the heat of battle. And that was his refuge. And so he shared that or tried to share it and comfort others through that, you know, that uh, his faith. And that's how he uh, got his nickname, the Rev. Blake was put into the 1st Brigade, 2nd Battalion, um, 327 Infantry, and Delta Company in February of 2004. And his unit deployed to Iraq um, in Kirkut in September of 2005, and returned back home in 2006, September of 2006. Second deployment to Iraq with the same company was in September of 2007, and his unit made it back in November of 2008. The ambush had already been set up and was well orchestrated, and uh, his uh, uh, five Toyota pickup trucks, they didn't have up-armored uh, Humvees or anything back then. In 2003, they drove Toyota pickup trucks, uh, and they were hit. They fought the best as they could, but Jake was hit and killed. Uh, and uh, the young man, uh, Green Beret in front of him, was hit five or six times and survived. So, you know, you, you, <laughs> I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to it, uh, but uh, he was hit once and that killed him. But uh, it was quite a fight. We got the notification of Blake being involved in a IED explosion on May 25th of 2008. It was the night before Memorial Day. And I had a sense of 
not peace that day. You know, there was something that was off, and I know why now. There was a live wire that was tripped, you know, and, and there were ten, you know, nine other men besides my son that was lost in that one incident. It was a void in my heart that could never be replaced, and still I feel that way. And you just live each and every day, minute by minute, and that's how you get through it. Because Blake wasn't with me, his sibling, his grandmother, aunts, uncle, cousins, um, I found peace knowing that he found family with his unit. Um, they were very close-knit. There's nothing that none of them wouldn't help each other with, um, support each other, encourage each other. Miss him dearly. I always wonder, you know, what would he be doing today? Where would he be? He'd be in uniform. He'd be somewhere, you know, around the world. Uh, but I, I miss that. I miss the phone calls. You know, hey, Pops, what are you up to? And I would tell him, I said, what are you up to? He said, oh, I can't tell you that. Where are you? I can't tell you that either. So, he'd never tell me what he was doing. Uh, you miss him. You always miss him. I can't help my son today, but I sure as hell can try to help his buddies and his buddies' families. I, I hope that's a legacy in his name that uh, will, will be worthwhile. I'm okay with it right now. The only thing I would like everyone to remember is, you know, not just Blake, but all of our sons and daughters who have been a casualty of war, is never to forget them. You know, as a parent of a fallen soldier, I don't want my child to be forgotten and his sacrifices to be forgotten.